Hello, my name is Brianna and today I'm going to walk you through a really easy project made from materials that you can easily get pretty much at any store, Walmart, Target, any tiny thing like that. And it's inspired by the quilting show that's currently on view at the shack. For this project, I specifically drew inspiration from the piece Radiance by Colleen Wooten. I love the playfulness and warmth in this piece, and it also reminds me of the paintings the famous artist Vasily Kandinsky did of concentric circles. Before we get started, I want to go over some of our materials. First of all, you're going to need some oil pastels. Not chalk pastels, they're very different oil pastels. They usually come in a pack like that with lots of colors. You can also use crayons if you've got that. They'll do a very similar job. You'll need some watercolor paints. Any kind is fine. You'll need a brush and some watercolor paper. Now you could also use cardstock or another very thick paper. A good way to see how thick it is is kind of see what kind of noise it makes when it, you wiggle it around like that. The thickness of the paper is going to keep the watercolor from sinking through and making your paper all kinds of weird and funky and wrinkly, okay? So before getting into the actual project, I want us to consider how certain colors make us feel different emotions. So what does colors like red and orange and yellow make us feel versus things like blue and green? Another way to think about these colors is a term we call color temperature. And so all that means is that colors like red, orange, pink, and yellow are warm colors. Think of like fire, the sunset, things like that. And then colors like blue, green, and purple are usually considered more cool colors. Another idea we're going to use while making this piece is the idea of repetition, using patterns, shapes, forms, colors over and over again to create a kind of theme that connects everything in our artwork. Okay, with those ideas in mind, let's jump into actually making the project. First, we're going to start by using our black oil pastel. Now, if you don't necessarily have black, you can use another very, very dark color, but I definitely wouldn't go and use anything too bright, okay? Maybe a brown or very dark purple. And we're going to just draw a very basic outline of a landscape. Now we don't want the landscape to get too complicated. Maybe a tree and one or two other details. Really just focus on what is right in front of your landscape. We call this the foreground of a landscape, okay? So I'm gonna go in and maybe decide that my horizon line is something like this. And I think I want to add in maybe a cool spooky fall tree and give it some branches coming out of it. And you're really just doing the outline of the tree or whatever object you are putting into your landscape. So if you're drawing maybe something like a house or a barn or something like that, you don't need to get into all of the little details inside of it. Just focus on the sh shape on the outside. Okay. I think I'm also going to maybe add like a picket fence coming through the other side I'm going to just use some kind of basic shapes to suggest my fence. And some things connecting it. You'll notice as I'm going 
over my lines, I'm pressing pretty hard to make sure that the line I create is pretty solid. You don't want it to be too spotty like this because later on the watercolor will seep into all those little, little tiny gaps in your drawing. So just go over a couple times to get through it. Now I'm going to go in and fill in the areas I've drawn. So this kind of hilly shape I've got here and I'm going to color in my tree as well, all with this black oil pastel. Okay. At some point your oil pastel gets close to the paper like mine. You can just tear the paper back a little bit and boom, you've got more oil pastel to use. So just going through and making this all kind of one solid black silhouette. And it might take some time, but that's okay. Just fill it all in with the black. moon to mine. Okay, now that we've got our silhouette of our landscape filled in, we need to choose if we want to start with either warm colors or cool colors. I've decided I'm going to use cool colors. So I pulled out some blues and greens, a light blue, a kind of more royal or navy blue. And with these cool colors, I'm going to make some repeating circle shapes going through the background of my landscape. Similar to the circles that we saw in the quilt and in the paintings by Kandinsky. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through and make some circular shapes. They don't have to match up perfectly. I think they look cool if they're all a little wonky, but that's totally up to you. Oops. And you wanna change your, the pattern up of the colors as you go. So I started with blue, I think I'm going to add some green circles, or half circles really. You don't have to be evenly spaced, but they can be if you'd like that. Go in with this light blue also. more. Okay. Once you've filled the space with lines, not getting too close because we still want to have some white space left over to put paint in. Okay. So we're going to get to our paint now. And since I used cool color pastels to make my circles in the background, I'm now going to use my warm colored paints to fill in these white spaces. So if you used warm colored pastels like red or orange to make your stripes, you're going to now use cool colored paints, okay? So just use whatever the opposite is. Okay, so since it's watercolor, we want to get our brush wet first just to pick up a decent amount of water, maybe tap it a little bit and just press into your paint to mix it just a little bit and pick some color up onto your brush. And then you can just go right in and start filling in kind of stripe by stripe those white areas. 
And you'll notice you don't have to be too careful about staying inside your lines with this. That's because the watercolor always wants to separate itself from the oil inside the oil pastel. Oil and water don't mix and we see that happening here. So I'm using some reds. Maybe I'll pick up some orange and just start filling in each little stripe. You can make a pattern here, alternating in a certain way, or you can make it random. It's completely up to you. You'll notice the less water you mix into your paint, the darker color you'll get. And if you want to make it lighter, just add more water. As you're going, be careful of your fingers. If they got a little colored from the pastel, you might wanna be careful touching the white parts of your paper. I'm noticing I smudged just a little bit. Try orange color. I'm even going to go in and grab some of this pink. Grab that. I put a piece of paper underneath the paper I'm working on just so we catch all those little pieces that run off. Okay, and once we get all the way filled in, each little white spot left has been colored in by your warm or cool colors. And that's our piece. If you'd like to use an oil pastel to sign your name, or your initials, you can, but that's about it. Now your paper is going to be very wet from the watercolor, so we wanna leave it dry flat. That way our water doesn't run and make weird little splotches on our painting. Okay, thank you so much for working with me today. I hope you have fun with this piece, uh, and thank you to the shack for giving me the opportunity to make this video.